saying things people already know out loud is tight. Avada Kedavra. You park in front of your house, I park in front of my house. This is... Hey, if you don't stop, I will contact the usher. What's up everyone, it's Adam from FWCI. We've got the Harry Potter and Goblet of Fire and the Goblet of Fire pitch meeting from Ryan George. I love the pitch meetings. I love the Harry Potter franchise and um, I'm looking forward to this as I am with all of them. This movie was a lot of fun. This is the one with the Triwizard Tournament. Uh, we also got to meet Victor Crumb, one of my personal favorites. We met Cedric Diggory and then we said goodbye to Cedric Diggory and his dad went, my boy, my boy, which has become a bit of a running joke in my house. Anytime something breaks, it just becomes my boy. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed the Goblet of Fire um, sketch that I did. I don't know what I'm going to call it yet, but it's uh, how Dumbledore would have wanted the uh, Triwizard Tournament to go if he had his way. And um, if you know me, then you know exactly where that's going. Let's have a look at Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire pitch meeting. You have that new Harry Potter movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. Wow, so what's going on with the characters? Well, I'll tell you, sir. All the guy characters decided it's time to have long hair for a year. Uh, okay, that's kind of <laughs> random. A little bit. Is that the only thing going on this year? Or <laughs> People in the comments were like, oh, this is the hair movie. This is the one with the hair. <laughs> nope, there's more actually. So Harry and Hermione and the Weasleys are going to go to this thing called the Quidditch World Cup. Okay. And they're also going with Arthur Weasley's co-worker and his son, Cedric Diggory. How were we introduced to him? Just the normal way, you know, he suddenly drops out of a tree. That's not normal. <laughs> sure it is. So they head to the World Cup and there are a ton of wizards there. Very cool. Wow, I can't wait to see what the Quidditch World Cup is like. Right? Sounds super cool, doesn't it? So then we're gonna cut to right after it's all done. Oh. And the event's gonna get attacked <laughs> by some Death Eaters and Harry's gonna get knocked unconscious. Oh no. Yeah, and so later he wakes up and everything's been burned to the ground and he's the last one there. Not a single person. This is the one with uh, David Tennant in it as well, wasn't it? I liked that twist, that he was uh, Mad-Eye Moody all along. Person saw him there and he wasn't affected by the fire or smoke. That's what we're going with. And then this Death Eater, Barty Crouch Jr. shows up and shoots a dark mark into the sky. Oh, very ominous. Anyway, so eventually Harry goes back to Hogwarts and Dumbledore gives his annual speech about all the ways the kids might die this year. As is tradition, sure. So what's going on this year? <laughs> this year Hogwarts has been chosen to host something called the Triwizard Tournament. And what's that? It's this big competition between three wizarding schools, so a bunch of people from these two other schools come in and do little dances for some reason. Oh, that's fun. So to have a chance of being chosen, <laughs> you need to be at least 17. Hey, the chicks that come in and do the... <sighs> cracked me up every single time. Then you need to put your name in something called the Goblet of Fire and only one wizard per school can be chosen. Okay. And once the three names are chosen, somehow there's a fourth name and it's Harry Potter. Wait, so are the students from the other schools just gonna live at Hogwarts now? Yes. Even the ones that weren't chosen? Yeah, they're all just gonna kinda live there for a year. That's kinda weird. No, it's not. So then Dumbledore run- does that take a year? The tournament? I thought it was like over like a week. Comes up to Harry and shakes him like crazy and says, Harry, did you put your name in the Goblet of Fire? Oh, that doesn't really sound like Dumbledore. Isn't he more calm and collected? <laughs> oh yeah, that's a good point. Well, I'm profoundly angry inside all the time, so maybe I projected onto him a little bit. You should maybe see somebody about that. No! <laughs> all right. So anyway, this is a super dangerous tournament, and if you're chosen, you're magically bound to compete. What does that mean? You have to do it. Right, but what happens if you don't do it? I don't I guess you die or something, right? That seems to be the implication. Why would this be a thing? Sounds like Dumbledore 101, if you ask me. Oh, feels good to be back in this skin. Well, sir, they really want to know which school has the best wizard child, so death's got to be on the table here. Oh, my God. <laughs> so throughout the year, Harry's got to figure out what these three events are going to be and how he should prepare. Got it. And freaking Draco Malfoy's going to drop out of a tree and make fun of him. Why is everyone up in trees? So they can drop out of them at the starts of conversations. But so anyway, then this new teacher, <laughs> Mad-Eye Moody, pops out and confronts Malfoy, turns him into a ferret. Why is he called Mad-Eye Moody? Well, one of his eyes is magic and zooms in like a camera lens and goes <laughs> Isn't it magic? Why is it making mechanical lens noises? <laughs> Unclear. But anyway, at the end of the movie, there's gonna be a big reveal where Mad-Eye Moody was actually that Barty Crouch Jr. guy the whole time taking Polyjuice Potion. Oh, very twisty. Extremely, sir. So for the first event, Harry's gotta steal an egg from a dragon. Oh boy. But this thing breaks loose from its chain and chases Harry around Hogwarts. Wow, so I guess the teachers must intervene, huh? A dragon is loose on school ground. Now they just kind of watch. That checks out, actually. That seems on brand for them. And then once he gets the egg, he's got to go listen to it underwater while a ghost tries to look at his wiener. What? So then eventually for the... 
<laughs> yeah, when you say it that blunt, <laughs> it sounds even fucking worse, man. Oh, Next God. competition, he's got to go underwater for an extended period of time. Oh, how come? Well, because see, the organizers have kidnapped people that the champions care about. So like Ron and Hermione are... This is some crazy bullshit. They're not in the tournament. How How is this allowed to be? There, there's the eight-year-old sister of one of them. Underwater. It tied up underwater, so Harry saves the life of Ron, but also of the eight-year-old girl since her big sister got eliminated. Oh, wow. So obviously Dumbledore gives him some extra points for bravery, because he does that any chance he gets. Wait, so they just kidnapped some kids against their will and put them underwater and... Hang on, before we break all that down, yes, that is what Dumbledore does. Just gives out points to Potter and Gryffindor like it's free candy. Hey, you want some points? Oh, Potter, you shined your shoes good. 100 points for Gryffindor. Oh, Potter, you ate all your vegetables. 10 points for Gryffindor. Nah. That bugged me so fucking much. Any chance he gets. Wait, so they just kidnap some kids against their will this... and put them underwater and we're gonna let them drown if the champions fail the task. Yeah. That little girl would have drowned to death if Harry hadn't saved her. Yeah, because like I said, they gotta know which young wizard is the best young wizard. So yeah, she would have drowned. This, man, I, wizards are not okay people, I think. Anyway, everybody in the stands goes nuts, obviously. What were they watching the whole time? Just the lake? Yeah, they were staring at a lake <laughs> for an hour, so that's a fun activity to watch. Staring at lakes is tight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's the next <laughs> event gonna be? They're all gonna stare at some hedges. Thrilling. Yeah, the final challenge is this giant hedge maze to find the Triwizard Cup, but it grabs you with its plantiness, so it's very scary. Man, Hogwarts just has the most violent vegetation. It sure does, sir. So then Harry and Cedric grab the cup. Between this death maze and the Whomping Willow, yeah, it does. At the exact same time, but it was a port key and it teleports them to a graveyard. Spooky. Very spooky, sir. And then Wormtail's gonna pop out with a little baby Voldemort and kill Cedric. You know, I'm actually shocked it's taken four years for a kid to die. So it turns out Barty <laughs> Crouch... <laughs> Is, that's actually not wrong. It, I'm surprised we haven't had a fatality under Dumbledore's care prior to this movie. Junior planned this whole thing because they needed a bit of Harry's blood to bring Voldemort back to life. He taught a class for a full year to get a couple of drops of blood. Yeah, and put his name in the Goblet of Fire and kind of laid out the path for him to be the one to touch the port key. That's, he could have just pricked him with a needle and then ran away. Yeah, but that'd make for a very, very quick movie. So he's gonna go with this <laughs> overly complicated plan that makes it more exciting, I guess. So anyway, then Voldemort gets a full body again. Uh-oh. Yeah, except for the nose. That doesn't grow in for some reason. <laughs> Maybe he's a late bloomer, maybe it'll grow in later. It won't. So now Voldemort <laughs> wants to kill Harry. Oh man, it's gonna be hard to survive an encounter with the Dark Lord. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, cause he gets some help from a couple of friendly ghosts. Oh. Do these ones try to look at his wiener? No, these ghosts are his parents' ghosts. And also Cedric is oh, a ghost yeah. and he's pretty chill about being dead. Our ghost back up. Yeah, so then Harry's able to grab the port key and go back to the tournament. Well, good thing it was a two-way port key. It worked out pretty well, sir. So then everybody's in shock that Cedric is dead and Harry takes off with Mad-Eye Moody. And does Harry figure out that it's not the real Mad-Eye Moody? He does. And then this guy recaps the entire school year for so long that Dumbledore and some teachers have time to bust in and help Harry. Oh, great. Yeah, and then coincidentally, at that very moment, his polyjuice potion runs out. Fantastic dramatic potion timing. Definitely. <laughs> so what do you think? Well, it sounds like a great Harry Potter movie, you know. Thank you. I just feel kind of bad for whatever actor's gonna play that Cedric Diggory character, you know? In all probability, that'll be be the biggest role of his career. Yeah, yeah, poor guy. Yeah, yeah, was cast in Twilight thanks to Harry Potter cast photos. Wow, so that was well before Twilight then. Huh, good for you Pattinson, or Battinson as he is these days I guess. Ah, oh, Goblet of Fire. Yeah, the uh, ending of that does come kind of suddenly, I guess, in a way. Um, the whole Cedric Diggory thing, he came and went. I, I was not attached to him, like, at all when he died at the end of that movie. A lot of people in the comments were like, man, I couldn't get through that. I was like, I've, I've known this guy for less than an hour, it feels like. But I can't wait to get to the next one, which I think is uh, the Half-Blood Prince. So, uh, is it is it that the next one? Order of the Phoenix is the next one, which uh, I, I think I wasn't a huge fan of Order of the Phoenix. So I'm curious to see what um, Ryan George has got to say about it. I'm really interested in his uh, Deathly Hallows Part 1 pitch meeting. That's going to be awesome because that movie was such a um, 
constipated movie. Like, nothing really went any anywhere, but everything built up, if that is not too gross of a uh, metaphor to use. <laughs> thanks for checking this one out, everyone. You can leave a super thanks in the comments if you want to support the channel a little bit further. And as always, everyone, be well, stay safe, look after your friends, see you in the next video. Peace.